Welcome back to another video folks and this is a first for me in this video I'm going to be painting some uh, 3D printed uh, models These are from Battleground 3D There'll be a link uh, to the, um, the website in the comments below Now, as I said, this is the first time I've painted 3D printed models I have painted models that have been cast from 3D printed masters um, but they were resin models. This is my first proper uh, 3D printed material, um, 3D printed, and that's the end product, so to speak. So, I quite look at these guys. Um, I've got four of these. These are the Samoa Pack 40s S307F or something like that, 21st Panzer Division, and good old Ausschlepper and a um, Polish T9, I think, or the T7s. I can't remember. Um, I'll double check. But let's have a look. Now, my issue in the past with 3D printed models is layering. Hopefully it's coming across here that there's, I mean here, there's, even the feel of it, there's, it's so smooth there's no layering on the sides, the most obvious areas. If you look here, you may see some layering appearing, but it's really smooth. I'm running my fingernails across it and I'm hardly noticing anything at all. See if you can hear a noise. Here's a tiny, tiny wee bit scratcher, but I'd imagine the paint will take care of that. I think these have been printed in that kind of an orientation. Uh, possibly like that, you know, so that it's given the best possible result. And here's another thing as well, this appears to be one piece. You can see the wheels are definitely attached. This is sunk right into the frame, it's, and you can see the frame is part of the hull. So in terms of, um, in terms of assembly, that's fantastic. And I got a really complex, well detailed kit with almost no assembly. The gun's in a couple of pieces, but that's not surprising. Looks like a front section and a rear section. And you can see the barrel looks very nice. So I think Battleground 3D are doing a good job with these. The off slipper is one piece. So once again, very easy to paint, uh, assemble, sorry. Very, very, very little in the way of layering as well especially on the sides, which is really important. And then the T7, I think, it, uh, T79, whatever. Uh, I'll get it, I'll get my facts straight. Um, this one's maybe got a bit more noticeable. This one. A bit more noticeable layering, but let's see how that appears under a coat or two of paint. And you can see, um, Hopefully this is going to come across, if I can get the angle right, you can see right in these supports for the fenders, those are entirely 3D. They are very, very thin struts supporting the fenders. I can put the hairs of this old toothbrush straight through it, for instance, which is quite something. Likewise, the towing hooks on the front of this Samoa Pack 40. Real, real sharp detail. So, that's how they look. They're going to go together as required with super glue. In terms of working with this material, um, I gave it all a wash. I wasn't sure how this kind of material was going to take paint. I've never worked with it before. So, just warm soapy water and then dried it uh, with a hair dryer. I would say be careful when you are like scrubbing it, like I use that to, to clean it. Because of the small detail, you don't want to be losing that. Fenders as well, they're really thin and well um, sized for the scale, but you don't want to be breaking them off. I would say the material when you are, because there is some little bits of sanding and cleanup required, for instance on the fenders on the front here, and the bottom of the tracks where there is uh, evidence remaining off, like the, the supports that they use in 3D printing. 
So you, you do have some cleanup to uh, do with a file and a um, hobby knife. And I found that it was very similar to resin when I was working it. So it sanded very, very fine like resin does. So you might want to use a little bit of water when you're sanding it. And it's a little bit brittle like resin is. So be careful. Don't go at it like it's um, a plastic kit because you may find that a bit of that fender which in a plastic kit would bend on this the fender might just snap so just uh, take your time uh, and be careful it's it's quite soft as well so don't, don't attack it too much but in all I've got five of these and then four each of them and it took me less than an hour to prepare them all and get them ready for this step and when it comes to painting them I'm going to paint them separate as you see here the turret though because i'll be doing a hard, hard edge camo this turret will be in place but otherwise the tracks i'll be painting separate the gun i'll paint separate and this is just one one piece very good very good so don't have to worry about how i'm going to approach it but they're ready to go after less than an hour so i'm going to show you some of the airbrushing um and we'll see how uh, we do with that and if there are any issues around us taking paint incidentally I'll be giving everything an undercoat of Tamiya some of these will be painted in Tamiya uh, completely but I'll be giving everything an undercoat in Tamiya I find that's a very good um, it's, a, it's a very good uh, undercoat and um, primer in itself because it's tough. When I am airbrushing, I use a proper airbrush booth with an extractor fan and um, have the extractor pipe stuck out the window so that it's clear in the room. But I also wear a mask. You've got to be careful, guys, especially when you're spraying Tamiya. It's uh, quite a strong paint you can tell just by the smell anyway you can see me working around the different parts of the vehicles the vehicles themselves being careful how I'm holding them you can mount certain parts in certain ways to make that process easier and you don't want to attempt this in one coat it's probably going to take three coats a first coat a second coat and then a third coat just to finish off and find all those little bits that you missed but you can see it's going on nice folks there's no problem here there's no um patchy areas i'm finding it to be a, a the same experience as painting resin and close to the experience of painting plastic but uh, i think resin's probably the most similar experience when it comes to airbrushing when I'm airbrushing three-tone camo, I always start with red brown before moving on to olive green. You can see I'm, I'm showing this in normal time just so you can help appreciate the, the movement of the hand because that's one of the most important parts of uh, getting a nice camouflage pattern sprayed on the vehicles. Your hand has to move quite a lot in a very small area. And then it can get even trickier, like here, where I'm trying to spray right alongside the brown with the green. You don't want one colour to dominate the other. At least here, the pattern is already in place. The trick is following it. And they're just speeding it up a bit. You've got to make sure your paint is properly thinned folks when you're doing this but this is not an airbrush tutorial this is about the vehicles and as you can see everything's going on really quite nice and now I'm showing you at just adding a nice simple whitewash or using blue tack for masking to get um, in this case a Polish um, armoured camouflage pattern and it's all going very very predictably and nicely folks And there's a wee tip as well, if you want to avoid dry brushing the hull sides, you can use blue tack for that too. At this point, I've completed 
all the base coats and given it a coat, given everything a coat of gloss varnish. Quite a wide variety of um, painting approaches, painting or camouflage styles here. And I have to say that the, um, the material took the paint very well. I had no issues with it at all. I've let the varnish dry for a bit. It doesn't do to immediately start applying a wash to the varnish I've found. Sometimes it can reactivate it, even though it's an acrylic varnish I'm using. I'm using it, I have had problems in the past, so best not to tempt fate. So now it's on to the washes, and I'm going to be approaching these in the same old way, unless I encounter any issues. I'll be using an enamel pin wash. These guys have got the most pronounced layering. It's evident on like the fenders on the side of the, the turret bin. So the washes could be tricky. You know, it might be that the um the, the wash seeps into the layers, but it might also be that I can control that because I'm using a pin wash and it is very, very precise and I don't leave it on the same spot unattended for any great length of time. So there's less likelihood of it seeping into the, the little layers and drying. We'll see how it goes. These guys are going to be pin washed as well. It's, it's a dark pin wash. But that's, this is really just the start of their white washing, um, as you'll see later. So I'll set up for that and show you it uh, one tank at uh, one vehicle at a time. Here you can see the enamel pin wash being applied to panel lines and it's drawing it off quite nice. I'm not seeing the wash being drawn off into layers that can be evident on different areas of different kits that I've got, but it's very, very easy to clean up. You just draw it back along any layers and you can draw it straight off nice and neat. And then you can see here the dark wash against the, the light vehicle color gives you a, a nice demonstration of it following those panel lines so you can see the wash in effect and you can see it is going on very controllably it cleans off very controllably so once again a very very similar experience to painting resin or plastic figures here's one that is finished and you can see the nice subtle panel lines as uh, I've been able to control the paint, get it where I want it. A little bit of tidy up here and there, but that's going to happen with every kit that you do. The areas on the sides of the engine compartment on this one were tricky, just due to layering, but it was all very, very manageable. It just took a little bit of extra attention and a nice end result. To complete the review, I'm going to paint some soft skins. You're probably more used to me painting tanks and infantry and such like, so this would be a good opportunity to show the, um, the kind of details that you paint in a soft skin and see how they look for these 3D kits. Now these are lovely little kits, I'm sure you'll agree. They're one piece castings. Here we have a Prots um, staff car and the other big beast beside it, it's a particular favourite of mine, is a Steyr command car. You can see the shading nice and clear, nice well defined lines, with nice clear light panels beside them. Very easy to control that wash. By the way, look at the underside folks, it's fantastic. You could have that car on its side, even on a, a um, diorama or on an objective marker. Not so much the props, but each kit's a little bit different. But super cool. Going to be painting tyres, going to be painting canvas covers, steering wheels, um, seats on the inside, all these kind of things, as well as doing some weathering, some chipping, 
and of course highlighting. We're going to start with the highlighting. I'm using Iraqi sand and a bit of an old beat up brush because I'm just going to be hitting what I call the external edges where I can use the flat off the brush just to move along edges, bouncing the brush along to a degree. I'm not trying to paint the entire length of these edges because then it becomes a little bit too um, neon almost. You don't need to be doing that. You can highlight an edge just by applying the highlight to certain areas on the edge and oh, that also helps set the foundation for the chipping stage that we'll be going on to after we finish the more difficult highlighting. With a better quality brush I'm going through and working on the internal edges. Those are for instance panel lines, uh, doors, hinges, all these kind of things where you need to be more careful. And this is where you've got to get the paint nice and flowing but not flowing like a river. It's got to flow off your brush but stay where it lands. And this is a good test of this 3D printed material too because if it's a layered area the brush will bounce along it a bit and there will be little blind spots but there wasn't too much of that here. Patience is required here folks. If you try and just get this process over and done as quick as possible you're just going to end up with big thick lines that are not going to do what you intended and they're going to look quite ugly and out of scale with the rest of the mini. Now it's time to apply all those little scratches that will help highlight the edges but also help break up the shapes of panels. You can put some wear on the bumpers. Once again patience is needed here folks because if you put on scratches that are too big or too numerous or you just end up you know, in, uh, in the zone and put too much on, then it's not going to look good. Especially in a staff car, we don't want to be going crazy here. We just want to be helping to add to the overall shape and feel of the vehicle. We're going to accentuate these scratches by applying a little bit of German Camel Black Brown into those deeper or, or larger scratches to represent some bare metal has been exposed and rusted somewhat. Once again, patience is very, very much the order of the day, folks. The map's already laid out for you with your Iraqi sand scratches, but don't overdo it. Just very carefully follow that map. Moving on to the seats, I'm giving them a coat, a shade coat of German Camel Black Brown. You have to be careful here that you don't paint the doors by accident when you're um, getting this right up to those edges but you also don't want to have yellow looking seats folks so take your time make sure the paint is going on good nice and flowing but not flowing out of control you see it's quite tight in here in the styre but it's all very doable be patient and you'll get a nice end result Now I'm using German Camel Medium Brown, though you can use Leather Brown or any similar kind of colour and put the main colour on. Now I'm following, depending on the, the sculpt, I'm just following the shape and it might take a couple of coats here folks, just to get a nice solid brown, but take your time with that. You can see there it's looking like a nice upholstered kind of leather and then when it comes to highlighting, you can use a colour similar to US Field Drab for a, a dull kind of highlight or orange brown for a brighter kind of highlight where it's, uh, it kind of looks, looks like a worn, sort of bright worn leather edge. We'll be covering up a lot of this with passengers but you don't know exactly where the passenger will be sitting or exactly what will be shown so just take a few minutes to get this looking right and the end result will look very very nice. I'm using Panzer Aces Dark Rubber for the tyres. Watch those wheel hubs guys, watch the wheel arches and 
Once again, you're not going to get this done in one coat, especially with all those tire treads. You have to put the paint on quite thin to get it in there. So take your time. Nice tires will look well defined and really help give the shape of the vehicle. And here I am using Olive Drab, US Olive Drab, as the deep shade colour for the canvas. It's a nice dark colour but it's brighter than Jeremy Camel Black Brown and works well with the colour I use for fuel grey. Oh, that's my head. Sorry about that folks. There's any number of colours you could use for the canopy but I'm using Panzer AC's Dark Mud in this instance and I'm just trying to create the folds of the fabric following the sculpt of the vehicle where it's assisting me but where it isn't I'm going to create folds by leaving shades. You see me drawing lines across. This is just the first pass so to speak. I will do subsequent passes A to reduce the amount of shade that's visible and B just to give a second coat to that uh, dark mud colour because you're not going to get it all done in one coat and you can see it's coming together quite nicely. The canopy on the props has a bit of a different um, look to it but we just take the same approach. We can see some lines on the back where the canopy is folded down so we'll follow them nice and carefully leaving little shade lines and then we just have to be creative again and get some shade into the main body for just lying on the back there and then green grey is a highlight colour so you want to be using this sparingly on edges between the main colour and the shade which will help give it a lot of depth. You may have seen me doing this on my figure painting. It's the same process and we're getting a really nice, if we could get my head out of the way, a really nice look. So I'm painting the steering wheel black and the styre's actually got a dashboard so I'm painting the various um, dials and such like on that black too. I'm giving the license plates an undercoat of London grey or deck tan. The two work quite well. One will give a stronger contrast than the other. And painted number plates look really good on soft skins. They're quite a prominent feature. And then you can see me just picking out the dashboard which is nicely framed in black so it'll stand out quite strong. And then with off-white finish things off paint those number plates, paint the dials and then I'm using German grey on the steering wheels and highlighting it with sub London grey. can be a bit tricky getting around these guys but just pick the angle that gives you the best approach. To weather the spare wheel I'm using Panzer Races Light Mud with some glaze medium for control. I'm applying a wash over it and a glaze medium means that I will have a bit of time just to work it to get the right level of dust that I want. To get the wheels, the rest of the wheels looking nice and um, muddy, I'm using some pigment powder. I am using a palette as you'll see so I get the right level of pigment because you can really overdo this folks and I'm applying it like a wash so that I've got control. Don't apply dry pigments to the miniature and then move them around as you'll see on large scale kits. One panel on a large scale kit is the size of that entire um, Prots command car for instance. So use a palette, move it around, work it with the brush after it's dried for instance if you feel you need to um, thin things out a bit if you've overdone it. I'm adding windshields here folks. I'm using some Perspex from a blister and some super glue. As the Perspex, Perspex is clear you probably won't see it going in but it is, believe me. And 
I'm adding a little bit more glue as required for spots that need to be pushed in because I need it to be connected all the way along the edges. Misting, I'm a bit worried about misting with super glue but I can't see another permanent way of getting these attached. Then onto the styre, it's not got a central support so this could be trickier. And then sliding it in, trying not to collect any super glue on my fingers and then apply it to the rest of the vehicle. The pigment is dry now so you can easily just brush off the excess but if you've put too much on you could have a bit of a struggle. So there was a bit of misting on the windows. It's not coming across very strong but it is there folks. So I'm going to use super glue remover. I'm going to use a little, put it a bit on a palette and use a little brush and just rub away at it and it comes off brilliant. It's a really really useful thing. If you have a problem with misting you can use this approach on any part of any figure. To make more of a feature of the windows I'm going to apply dust you know, in that nice sort of clear space where the windscreen wipers would be and dust elsewhere. So you've got to make sure you know if the windscreen wipers are at the top or the bottom and then you can start creating your shape and I'm going to use Panzer Ace's light mud again with the glaze medium which means I can apply it and then wash it off. Hopefully it's coming across okay there folks. Very very simple process. Just try and get your when your clear wind sweat wind wiper swept area as rounded a shape as possible. Don't worry too much about it being absolutely 100 percent accurate to the original vehicle just as long as people can see it and recognize it for what it is and they'll go well done that's a nice thing I might do that on my own kit one day. Let's end this little review back at the painting table folks. I've been painting a few more here these are a ski Jaeger division project so there's, there's a loss of transports, half tracked or fully tracked transports, some nice RSOs with some really nice canopies. These are painted with the same colours that I used on the, the canopies on the vehicles, but there are lots of colours available. You can see I've done something similar with a windscreen as well. And here's some, well, a couple at least, that have three tone camo. You still need a coat of matte varnish, by the way, folks. The long bed version of the Maltier. Now these are actually going to have, a couple of them anyway are going to have any aircraft guns on them. But there's one here with a worn whitewash camo. Another one which is just dark yellow. And one here with three tone camo like the multi-airs, sorry the, um, the RSOs and you can see it looks quite nice with that canopy in place as well it's a beast of a vehicle actually but I think this is a longer version there's a shorter version um, with just two sets of um, suspension mounts on it two of them though, two of these multi will have anti-aircraft guns in the back so there you go folks, that's hopefully a useful little look at some of 3D, uh, Battlef Battlefield3D.com's uh, um, figures and maybe give you a little bit of confidence about uh, trying some 3D prints for yourself, either printing them or buying them, like I have received these already printed for, from somebody to paint, but um, 
the options out there to buy them like this from certain producers or get a printer and print them yourself but that's an entirely different story folks and uh, not what I'm going to go into here I just wanted to show you guys how to paint the completed 3D prints and hopefully you can see it straightforward with no real issues and if you follow my approaches for your plastic or resin kits you'll get the same good results with these guys here so thanks again for watching folks any questions or comments stick them down below thank you to all my subscribers and if you have considered subscribing but not done so already please do it helps me grow the channel thank you for watching